What's your tagline again? When love meets finance, is it? Where romance meets finance. Where romance, romance meets, which is a very thin line between, mm. you know, prostitution, for example. You know, they were following me for about four days already in a room that was that that can fit about maybe five six people, but there was it maybe in a way. Uh, so, we're, we're, we're not sure. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so it was your own work. <laughs> I think. I think so. <laughs> so, so you were so, the boy from uh, town. Yeah. <laughs> Assalamualaikum dan selamat sejahtera. Welcome back to our podcast channel Apa Cerita. Bersama saya Ashraf Khalid. Eh, hey, bersama saya. Bersama saya Ishak Kamaruddin. Ishak Kamaruddin. <laughs> oh, okay. We introduce each other. Oh, okay, okay. That's the way. That's okay, the way. okay. So I'm delighted today and super excited for a special guest because I heard from Ashraf about this special guest yep. and he speaks highly of him. And I told my friend from Germany about this special guest and he said that this guy is global man yeah man yeah he he's covered in like big media companies like BBC Vice, Vice yes. and New York Post if I'm yeah, not mistaken and, and I was with Ishra yesterday and he was super excited man he was like hey, can I come also yeah. yeah I want to meet this guy you know so I think yeah so I'd like to pass to Ashraf to yeah. introduce so, our guest today uh, like you mentioned just now he's a good friend of mine we met uh, each other when we were in Melbourne we were studying in Melbourne mm-hmm. uh, he is the founder of a very controversial platform Mm-hmm. Which is called Sugar Book. Yep. And today we're going to discuss a lot of things. Lah. And let's welcome Darren, Darren Chan to the set of CEO Apple of Twitter. Sugar Book. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys. Thanks for yeah. having me. Thank yeah. you. Um, thank you, Ashraf. It's so good to see you again. Man. I I think, you know, even though I don't see you that often, but I always see your updates, lah. if not in the news, in your social media. Lah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Darren. Apa, yeah, like I said, we met in Melbourne. So, do you, do you remember anything about us in Melbourne? Uh, I, I remember how I met uh, Ashraf back in Melbourne. Uh, I, I was very close friends with, uh, with your brother, yeah, yeah, Adib, I, yeah. right? And uh, back then, I remember that uh, I was uh, at your house and we were playing games. You play a lot of games back yeah. in Melbourne, <laughs> Mel- 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 student life, right? Yeah. Mm. And, uh, FIFA. Uh, yeah, we were playing FIFA and uh, Ashraf was so good in FIFA and... Uh, he was always uh, trash talking uh, uh, to us. <laughs> so, for example, he'll be he'll be like, uh, "Hey, Darren, I heard you're really good in FIFA, um, but you know what? I can trash you anytime." <laughs> I actually Are you ready? That era, man. <laughs> that era of him. Yeah. That yeah, was right. a way of me trying to hustle, bro. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to get some money out of you. Yeah, the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and 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 we were playing FIFA, and uh, and uh, and then he mentioned that. Uh, in, in the middle of the game, he was like, hey, I got to pause the game for a while. I'm like, okay. So he paused the game and he just went outside. Mm-hmm. And he went outside for about 30 minutes. He came back in and then he's like, okay, I'm ready to go again. So I'm like, w- w- Ashraf, what do you do? So apparently he went out at that age, he went out to sell some handphone or something <laughs> oh, yeah. to, to, to his friends and then came out, came back in and then we started uh, playing oh, yeah. again. And, and at that time, I knew that Ashraf was going to be a very successful uh, businessman. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so at that time, what well, I used to also sell a lot of things, bro. I used to sell handphones. I remember, I remember I you told to me about like, it. Yeah. Taser guns. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. I can make money off and then I would, you know, try to get, try to find money, like, even trying to hustle people for, for my FIFA, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but I think it was all good memories. Like. But Darren, you know, we've been friends for, for quite a while now. But then I never really asked you about your family. Yeah, and, and I heard from somewhere you are actually a son of a Tansri and then a tycoon from Penang. Is that true? I think I think a lot of people got a lot of things to say. Um but my dad is uh my dad is uh, a a very modest, humble person. Mm. Uh businessman. Mm. Uh he retired at the age of uh 40, 45. Wow. That's uh, uh, that's yeah. young man. Yeah. And um uh, I think um, I just picked up a lot of uh, business uh, etiquettes from him back mm-hmm. then, and uh, and and today he's just enjoying life in in, in Penang. Oh, is it? So is is it through his dancery? No, no, he's uh, just a very hardworking businessman. I can say. <laughs> so what what business does he do? 
Uh, he was into manufacturing and also in the GPS uh, business mm. um, back then. Um, I think he 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 manufactured uh, GPS for uh, Mercedes uh, back then, mm. and uh, and also clean room products. Clean room, for example, if you're entering a a, a, a room that is that requires a different sort of uh, uh, attire, mm. the clean attire. So he manufactures where you change. that. Yeah, where, where you change. Normally for factories, right? For factories, yeah. correct. So, so he manufactures that mm. uh, for, for Intel and all mm. uh, yeah. at that time. A lot of Penang businessmen are into manufacturing. Yeah, yeah because yeah. it's yeah. like a hub of manufacturing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it's, it's... So he's owned, he owned the, the factory and stuff? Uh? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, so learned a couple of things from him there um, when I was a kid, so growing up, right? Did you go to the office and see like what he was doing and stuff like that? Oh yeah, of course. Um, I recall, right? Um, when, when, when I was younger, every time after school, I would go to his office mm-hmm. and I'll play around in his uh, factory in his office and I'll try to, uh, I'll try to, uh, basically, I'll, I'll, I'll mess up the whole office, <laughs> <laughs> right? So. Um, and um, then I'll watch how he uh, he does his meetings and how he uh, how he uh, conduct, conduct himself, uh, yeah. his, his whole his, his work schedule and everything, mm-hmm. and how he talks to people. And one thing that I learned from him was that uh, no matter um, what you do, you're always giving uh, your respect to everyone. everybody. Mm. Yeah. So I saw how he treated the security guards, mm. uh, the janitors. You know, all um, with respect. All though. with High, high, high respect, and they love talking to him. So mm-hmm. that's that's how I think I I picked up a bit from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no wonder you're such a humble guy. Also, I try to yeah, be. Yeah, <laughs> him, even though I know he's from a good family, but he's been always humble with everybody. Can okay? understand? And yeah, so like, uh, then uh, after that, you didn't have any much. Like, your parents didn't want you to go into the family the business, business yeah. or anything like that. Oh, um, my dad always wanted me to go into manufacturing, mm-hmm. but I was so hard headed. <laughs> um, I, I I always wanted to do a thing of my own, um, and um, I guess um, he he mentioned to me that he wanted me to take over his um, company and everything. But uh, I liked business, but I also wanted to start something of my own. But at that time, I didn't know what I was going to start mm. um, because we are at such a young age. All we wanted to do was you know just to have fun and just to play and everything. Yeah. So. Um, so so it, it came to a point where uh, my dad was like, okay, I think you are playing too much. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he, he, he started, uh, uh, he sent me to, uh, to, to Melbourne to further my studies and oh. that's where... I oh, you guys. you played too much before Melbourne. Yeah. So Melbourne was yes. actually okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I played I played a lot uh, <laughs> before I went to Melbourne, and I think Melbourne just uh, uh, just elevated it. <laughs> oh, elevated, <laughs> right? Elevated. Okay. Elevated it because I met people like uh, Ashraf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, much. Um, how was your like, yeah. like? How was your childhood and like you know family and all? Were they strict with you though? My father was a very strict uh, person. He mm. can be he can be open at times, um, but he was super strict. Um, what I could recall is that uh, my mom my mom was the one that is always caning me. Mm. Caning, yeah. Oh, my mom was the one that was caning me. So my dad will come back from work and he will he will save, save the you. day. <laughs> oh, he will, he'll be the one that saves the day. He saves the day. And then he ends up caning me. <laughs> <laughs> so double shot, bro. <laughs> so so yeah. Um, childhood was um, uh, my childhood was uh, a lot of ups and a lot of downs. Mm. A lot of ups. Uh, what I can recall was because a lot of uh, a lot of people think that uh, I come from a, a very very uh, rich uh, family. Family. What I can say is that I come from. A very okay family, a, a, a family that is very comfortable, mm. above average. Yeah, above average, very comfortable. But we still had to, we still had to uh, take care of uh, what we're spending on and everything. Yep. Um, and at uh, I think at about age 12, 11 or twelve, um, I was so rebellious. I was so rebellious. I started uh, 
um, having uh, a lot of arguments with my dad. I mean, those were the times when, mm. when we were kids and we always oppose what our parents tell us. Mm. If they say A, I will say Z. So at that time, I, re- I recall at one time I was so, I had a big uh, argument with my dad. I was so sad and I started, uh, I left the house. Mm. So I packed my, yeah, yeah. So I packed my bags and I just, I just, I just went out and never looked back. So I spent about a couple of years um, outside. Couple of years. A couple of years. Twelve wow, years old. Twelve yeah, years old. Twelve, maybe thirteen, around that age. Mm, mm, mm. So twelve, thirteen, I spent my time um, outside, basically at the streets, lah. Basically. But what? What about money and like? Yeah. Yeah, so I didn't have money at that time. Oh, you didn't steal some of your dad's money before you left? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I did. <laughs> that would have been a better plan. Yeah, bro. yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, if I did at that time, um, maybe I would have uh, started something already. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at that time, um, I, rem- I recall that uh, I was uh, looking, uh, desperately looking for money. Mm-hmm. Um, but my friends knew that uh, I came from an okay family, so they were okay with, you know, pinjam here, pinjam, 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 pinjam. But there will come a time, they, it, it came a time where they were like, uh, okay. Too um, much. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's getting too much, right? So I started uh, working as, uh, uh, I had to, you know, um, as a parking attendant, I had to jaga kapak. While you were 12, 13 years old? Yeah, yeah. Oosh. So I started jaga kapaks and uh, um, in a, in a, Maybe in a day, I would get about five to six ringgit. Mm-hmm. And I had to survive that five, five six ringgit. But in a what day, about no? sleep? Where do you sleep? I sleep in friends', friends place. Friends' house. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, and wherever I can find, basically. Mm-hmm. My friends were saying like, okay, you can, you, why don't you jump in my house for a couple of days? Okay, then I'll go. Mm. I came to KL also, s- saved some money, like about, at, the, at that time, about 15 ringgit or 20 ringgit. And then I took a bus to KL also. Where, where, where were you before before that? Before Penang. Penang. He grew up in Penang. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yeah, so um, I would try to kumpul about maybe five to six ringgit to go past the day. And uh, then I recall that uh, at that time, if I want to drink uh, water, no, sorry, five to six ringgit. And with that five to six ringgit, I survived on, uh, you know, Lok Lok? Mm. Mm-hmm. The so, chuchu, chuchu, yeah, all those chuchu, yeah, right? Yeah, and that, that ikan, uh. Lori, yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I will buy uh, maybe a couple of sticks and then just tahan throughout the whole day. Uh, and then uh, water. So if I want to drink water and if I run out of money, um, I will uh, tap water. Go to the tap water and uh, drink from the tap water. <sighs> and at that time, I was smoking as well. At that time. Oh, <laughs> 15 or 12? 12, 12, uh, well, 12, 13. 12 13, 13 years old, I was smoking as well. So... Um, so if I want to buy, uh, uh, if I want to smoke, what I'll do is I'll go to, you know, any like mama stall or, mm. or, or coffee shops. Buy the one, one cigarette there. Yeah. No, I will smoke from the unfinished cigarettes on the, on the table. Oh my God. Yeah. Mm. You're like, like, like super so unexpected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were like, <laughs> Anak Tansri had a good life. You didn't know the story. <laughs> I didn't know, man. I, you know, I wanted to like, Ask about his holiday with family. Yeah, 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 yeah. same. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea, man. Yeah, yeah. So, so that was the Siggies. Um, then water. And then, uh, yeah. So, so a bunch of other, other, other stuff that uh, happened when I was a kid. Um, but, but at that time, your parents didn't find you? Yeah, they were, they, were, they were looking for me everywhere. Uh uh, there was also a couple of police reports as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure, to, right? To, After to 48 to hours or something. Yeah. 12 years old, I had the first police report. <laughs> 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 so, so, so I think looking back, um, I think um, it shaped the way how I was and mm. how I am today. Mm-hmm. And um, if, if I look back, because I tend to share these stories uh, with, uh, with, with my loved ones um, and then uh, we try to walk back our memory lane mm-hmm. on how how far we've we, we've, we've come. come, and I share it with my employees as well. So I always remember it. Um, looking back, it shaped the way um, how I protect uh, my loved ones, my company, my employees, and protect mm-hmm. my business and protect everything that we've built. Because I I, I found that uh, people are going to come after you no matter what. Mm-hmm. Right? If if you're making some money, there will be sharks outside yep. all the time, mm-hmm. and uh, we really have to know. Um, who are we going to be working with? We have to analyze the whole situation, the person as well. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so so all these things I picked up when I was uh, you know uh, away from home and during also your running yeah, running days yeah running phase yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, and then after that what happened how did you uh, get back to the family or what what was the story after that so um, but I, I think main cause is I really ran out of money really <laughs> <laughs> I. I uh, <laughs> Uh, no more avenue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give was, up, uh, give up. I was doing uh, <laughs> it's time. I was it's trying time. to do so many things, right? And uh, things got worse and worse and worse. Yeah lah. Um and uh, I knew how hard it was without money. Mm. And then thank God one day I think uh, my dad my dad uh, bumped into me somewhere. I came back to, from KL to Penang already. So my dad bumped into me somewhere. So so he 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 tried talking me back into home. And he was then, nice, huh? yeah. He 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 was sad, mm. very sad. Um, so I could see that uh, he was sad as well. So then I I thought to myself, maybe you know, it's uh, time. Yeah, maybe 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 the holidays over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a couple face. of years, man. That's crazy. Yeah, like that, I ran from home too, but huh, you never oh, you yeah, like but only like a couple of hours. <laughs> 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 and then when I reach home, my dad throw me, go, go, go and run. It's <laughs> 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 Yeah, yeah, it's, some it's crazy. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can that is crazy, man? I can't imagine. But why? Why did you uh, run away from home? Some fight, fight also, yeah, right? Fight, yeah, fight. Fight. But yeah. do you have any other siblings? Yeah, yeah. I have uh, a younger brother and a younger sister. My younger brother is in Penang. Mm. A younger sister is here. We're, um, and we're, we're quite close. Are they all in yeah. business also? Or no. My sister is working as a finance finance accountant. My brother owns a, a, a cafe called Black Cattle in uh, in Penang. Oh, nice! Yeah. Oh, so also business, uh, so business, business as well. Business, yeah. finance, money runs in the family. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you can't yeah. run away. Yeah, money is always uh, flowing around the family. Mm-hmm. Um, I grew up in that uh, that kind of nature. So when you went back, did you patch things up with your family and? and yeah. How so, was your relationship with them after that? So. I went back and uh, everything was quite mellow. Uh, my my dad took a step back from being strict and everything, and I had more freedom. Uh, well, before that, they were super strict, uh, very, which is very, why you, you yeah, ran away. Uh. Yeah, but uh, but but I'm not trying to say that uh, you know if uh, do that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not trying to <laughs> encourage anyone to run away yeah, from no, home. No. But you I know? would imagine the bond became stronger somehow, right? Yeah, it got stronger. There was more, just more freedom to do uh, your things. But there mm-hmm. was uh, good and bad to that as well, mm-hmm. um, because uh, when I went back, uh, the people that I was, uh, all, all my friends that I was hanging out with, uh, they came back as well because they know that you are back with your parents already, and you're gonna have money now, <laughs> uh, and and they came back as well. To claim the owings. Claim, yeah, <laughs> exactly the debts that I, I I owe them and everything. So yeah, so um, then. Start to meet a lot of people, a lot of people from uh, from from the streets. Uh, to give you an example, the my streets, yeah, fr- yeah, from the streets. Uh, yeah, like the two years you've met, like yeah, street people. A lot of people, mm. a lot of people, like gangsters. Uh, macam, no, macam, 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 macam. You still yeah. maintain your relationship with them till today? I do, I do. Um, my and and they became one of my closest friends. Mm. Um, but I can, uh, I'll give you an example of my uh, the friends that I. Uh, in, in, in back in my childhood, um, a lot of them are either in uh, um, uh, rehab or uh, uh, jail or dead. dead from your childhood, yeah. From the two years, yeah, yeah. From from from. So in that two years, all all those guys became became really close to me, mm-hmm. very very close to me. So we had a big circle of friends, and uh, we just kept in touch and kept in touch. Um, but people start disappearing, you know, disappearing like. Passing away or maybe mm. ending up in jail and everything, um, but uh, but I still keep in touch with them uh, because uh, when I was really down, they were all there for me. Mm-hmm. But they knew you successful now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So um, funny thing is that uh, when when people see you in the news, old friends will start to call. <laughs> and uh, I, I I remember one of my friends uh, found out that uh, I was running Sugarbook and he started uh, calling me for money. Mm. Um, he wanted to borrow about 150k. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, I thought uh, 50 ringgit, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 150,000 ringgit, and and I told him that hey, you know that's a lot of money. And then he mentioned that uh, oh, it's nothing to you. Just just give, can't you give an old friend uh, some money? Mm. Um, for that, I did not end up giving the money. Um, but we just uh, I just stopped talking to him. I just mm-hmm. stopped talking because I felt that there wasn't any respect there. Mm-hmm. Um, they are coming back just because of money and 
not even asking nicely How and you're you also taking that? the money yeah. to buy drugs or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, not not to start a business or whatever. So I lost contact with uh, that friend. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So I wanted to ask also just now, uh, the follow-up question lah that I put, was it nice to be born in a rich family? So I don't know if that question is relevant now. <laughs> 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 but I think he, he can't answer it without answering it. <laughs> so my follow-up question is not so good. Lah. My expectation was totally different. <laughs> 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 I, mean, I okay. thought you were like silver platter, driver, yeah, bodyguard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like um, your life y- now, lah, yeah, we, <laughs> 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 I mean, you have... Um, I had um, I had the privilege of uh, having a driver back then also when when uh, when my dad was working, mm. um, but I took everything for granted at that time. Mm. At that time, I, because you know when we are when, when we when we are born in a in, yeah. in a in a family that is okay, we don't even know if our parents are rich. We don't even know what rich yeah, is, yeah. Yeah. right? Um, yeah. So we we tend to take everything for granted. But for me to just left home just like that and just suffer outside, mm. it really just showed me. You need money, yeah. and m- you need money to survive. Mm. It just showed me how I gotta be grateful for money. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, we we heard a bit about your your background and everything, and so I want to go. I want to move on to the next phase, lah, in life, which is uni days, which is where we met, lah. Okay. So uh, in uni, how how were you as a student? Were you a good student? <laughs> <laughs> Always in class, you know, phys- finishing your assignment by yourself, or how are you as a student? Employer. Or you bunch of people <laughs> who just do your work. I don't know. I was super rebellious back then um, as, a, as a student. Um, I, was, um, I was always involved in fights. <laughs> in Melbourne. <laughs> in, in, in Melbourne. I, I studied in uh, KTJ as well, College yeah. of Gujarat. We were ah. in the same school, but he was but my different, super different senior. Time super senior. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, K- oh, were you guys in KTJ? I was in KTJ. He was, yeah. He was. KTJ. Yeah. I, 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 think, I think I broke the record for KTJ for the, you know, the, the one student that uh, got expelled the fastest. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> I was there for three months and I, I didn't oh, okay. go there. I, I got expelled too, but... <laughs> <laughs> on my last day. Uh, so my last day, I was so unhappy with this kid and I punched him yeah. during his sleep and then kantoi. Turns out to be my friend. We met a couple kid. of years after. Bagi I keluar sekolah kan. Oh, you three months, what did you do? Fight? Yeah. I think uh, first day I started fighting. <laughs> first day. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I don't think the family was the problem, la. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back, right? <laughs> Looking back. <laughs> but KTJ was good times. Um, I think uh, one of my most fun times. Three months. Um, yeah, in three months, I made a lot of friends and yeah. uh, a lot of friends because we stayed there, right? Yeah. It's a it's a hostel, right? It was a holiday for you. <laughs> uh, it, it was kind of like a holiday <laughs> for me. Um, you know what? Actually, I I I. I Which st- house were you in? Na- Nazimuddin. Eh? Oh, Nazi, same man. Oh, I was yeah? in Nazi too, yeah. Yeah, Nazimuddin. Nazim- Nazimuddin was the naughtiest house at that yeah, time. Yeah, <laughs> yellow. Eh? Yeah. yeah. I, uh, um, I actually started uh, uh, selling some items and making money in, uh, <laughs> <laughs> in, in those KDJ. three months. <laughs> yeah, in, that, in those three months. Because, I, because at that time, you, because we were smoking, right? At that time. <laughs> yeah. And uh, a packet of cigarettes at that time was maybe about eight ringgit, I mm. think. Mm. Uh, seven, at eight time, ringgit, yeah. right? So um, um, I knew I could make make some money off this. So I tried oh, when I go back uh, to Penang or, or, or for holiday, I would try to bring in as many cigarettes as possible. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so once I bring in cigarettes, I'll sell one cigarette for about two to three cents. ringgit. Oh, two, 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 wow. two three ringgit for one, one batang. Uh, one batang. One so that's what ringgit. ten or twenty batang inside. 20, 20, 20, yeah, 20 You batang. sell one by one, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. used to sell two, but fifty cents. Meaning you mark up, ah, mark up. Okay. <laughs> that is during your time. My time is even later. Right? <laughs> Fifty cents. It's just two ringgit. <laughs> uh, and my cigarettes and came with. And those rich uh, boys were smoke on kaya. Yeah, yeah. My cigarettes came with a free uh, plastic uh, uh, fork. Oh, free plastic fork. I will give you a free plastic fork because you need to use the fork and put the cigarettes on the fork to smoke. So that your so hand that doesn't you know smell. Your hand. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have uh, cigarette smell. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, so Margin too it. good, man. You can even give free fork. <laughs> yeah. And also, I sold uh, Maggie also. Maggie, mm. Maggie me. Um, Indomie and everything. 
<laughs> you won't get into trouble. You can tell what what other things you saw. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's in the past, right? The they past. can't. <laughs> School is finished already, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so cigarette, uh, basically cigarette, cigarette, cigarette yeah. Maggie, Maggie yeah, food, Maggie. And stuff like that. Uh. Yeah, you know, I was I was like the opposite. I would just yeah. bring all food and stuff and give it to people. Oh yeah, yeah. So I just thought that you would you are the one that would be selling. No, I sold other things. I sold a hard drive and I put in movies and stuff like that inside the ah. hard drive. Because at that time, there's no Netflix, right? Uh, so I sold a hard drive uh, at a higher cost. Uh, maybe I sell for 200 bucks, but then inside got all the movies, How I Met Your Mother, Big Bang Theory. So and all the yeah. free food is like tripwire. Yeah. To get your client. To get the client yeah. to love me, you know? That's good. <laughs> Build <laughs> rapport. Yeah, but yeah. at that time when you were selling, I think... Uh, it was very tech based already, right? Our, yeah. our, our, our society. Yeah, yeah. Everybody was using handphone. Facebook was just, uh, you know, just launched, started. Yeah, just just launched. started. Mm-hmm. So it was a time where people wanted to consume media, but then there's no Netflix. And then if you want to download one by one, it takes a long time. So when I go back, I just tor- torrent it. And then masuk, <laughs> I buy the hard drive, maybe like 50 bucks or something like that, like just off Alibaba and then sold it for 200 bucks. And it's good a profit margin. Good profit. And then it's not. Considered illegal la, at that time. At school, it's not illegal. La. Yeah. You know, outside, it's illegal. La. <laughs> <laughs> but how long were you in uh, KDJ for? I was there for two years. Yeah, so I was there longer a bit than you. La. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you made a lot of friends there, I suppose, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was one of the, the best experiences. Yes, for exactly. Me one of the most uh, fun yeah. experiences at, at, yeah. at KDJ. Okay, so like back to the university, right? So how were you in university? Because, you know, I wanted to also inspire the the naughty boys lah that watches this right maybe they feel like macam they don't have a future maybe they feel no like chance macam no chance to, yeah. to, to become successful but look at you today you know you turn your life around so you know maybe you can tell us a bit about your how you were as a student um, I rarely go to classes <laughs> and and I'm pretty sure that uh, a lot of uh, maybe a lot of our young 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 kids uh, when they listen to this they will feel the same way as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it's not that it's okay not to go to class. Um, it's just that uh, I couldn't find the things that I like uh, to be doing. So if if I don't like it because um, I've if I don't like it I'll fall asleep. Mm-hmm. But if I like it like for example I love uh, marketing. Um, I love building things and I love to see the end result of it uh, and management as well. So when it comes to, every time I notice that when it comes to marketing classes mm. or uh, management classes, I have my full focus mm. um, at that subject yeah. and I excelled in it. So I guess, um, I guess we, need, we just need to find what gets us going. Yeah. What, what interests you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you put me in the accounts class, I'll bring a pillow. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you put a beautiful girl in front of you? <laughs> yeah. Well, uni, uni was always a uh, <laughs> chasing girl. Well. Um, but, uh, but yeah, but I, 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 I needed money as well to, uh, to, be, to start uh, dating all these girls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, so um, to, to all those that, uh, that are listening to this, um, um, if you are, let's just say, not going to class, you got to ask yourself why and what are you doing outside? Mm. Uh, what are you doing when you're not going to class? What interests you uh, more than uh, making money? Because a lot of us would think that uh, studying, yeah, and studying. Yeah, uh, a lot of us would think that uh, you know it's it's it, uh, money doesn't matter right now because our parents are paying for this, our mm-hmm. parents are paying for that, and a lot of a lot of us will feel that uh, it's no problem. My dad or my mom will cover it. Mm-hmm. But there will come a time when the plug is pulled, and oh, what are you going to do? What are you going yep. to fall back on? Mm-hmm. Do you have a cert? Do you have this? Do you have that? Um, but uh, I feel that uh, the most important one is we got to find what we like doing yeah, but the most. Also, like as you mentioned, you didn't go to class, but you were not, not doing anything. You were always, always doing, doing something, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, was, I was always running around with your brother. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> well, I think you were also making some money, right? At, at that time, um, I... It's not... It's not uh, it's not a lot of money, but I, I tried to survive there because I, my dad also found out that uh, I was just uh, uh, a lot of partying and everything. And we did a lot of shopping as well. Uh, <laughs> my, um, myself and your brother, um, <laughs> we would go to, um, go to Harrods 
And there was Harrods in Melbourne. Yeah, yeah, I think I think it's called Harrods. No, no, no uh, Westfield, I think. Westfield, uh, King yeah. Street. There was Harrods, right? Is it Harrods? Oh no, that's Collins or King Mars. Street. I, um, I, I can't remember the name. Something yeah. like Harrods. Something like Harrods. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. One of one of. It. And when when we're there, we'll at that time we were kids and we'll get special treatment. Yeah. They yeah. will come with uh, champagne uh, <laughs> glasses for you <laughs> at, at that time. So. But his brother didn't drink, uh, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, did. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we were spending a lot of money, and uh, my dad uh, tried to cut off uh, money, and uh, then I tried to uh, find ways to, uh, to survive again until until my dad came. Oh, oh so one of the ways that what what I did was I started renting my house out. Renting <laughs> yeah. the, the house that your dad rent. Right? <laughs> yeah. oh, my dad rent, rented a house for me. And then you rented it. I rented it out for <laughs> someone else. Where did you stay? Uh, but I, I stayed uh, oh. with a friend. Uh, but I, I rented out to a, a, a close friend of That's mine. Super smart. Uh, oh, don't say that. James, James. Oh, James. I rented out to James, a very close friend of mine. If James is hearing this. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for supporting that. <laughs> times. <laughs> yeah, so those were the uh, uni days, I think. Um, fun days. But uh, I think, uh, looking back, I think we should have studied harder. Um if you ask me, what are you? If you could go back and uh, maybe you know do some change something in uni, what would you be doing? I would I would definitely be doing finance, mm. um, because all the people that I work with, um, uh, they they excel in numbers. They are very 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 good in numbers. If you if you take up the Excel sheet or Google sheet, mm. uh, my partner. He would be he would be doing um, Excel like just playing games, you Formula know. Try to see yeah. this yeah. guy. Yeah. 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 Oh, yourself as well. Yeah, I, I background in finance as well. Yeah. Because your dad is a finance person, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember. So that's why I sit around him. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> in the end of the day, finance is all about return. What's the return per year? How yeah. about, right. Yeah. Everything you do is is just what's the return. Yeah. 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 Exactly. To put it simply, you know, I I read all over the internet, right? Every interview or whatever you go to, you you seem like a very private person. You you don't want to talk about anything private. But why why open up this time? Um. Okay. So a good question. Um. I've actually stopped uh, doing interviews in uh, Malaysia, Malaysia already. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Um. But um, when Ashraf uh, texted me and he mentioned that uh. Um, he's starting a podcast, and and a lot of memories just, you know, started. Came back. Yeah, came back like how we met and everything, mm-hmm. and and how. How I tried to scam you. <laughs> <laughs> Into FIFA. <laughs> yeah. A lot of all these memories came back, and I was like, um, I think I need to do this. I I spoke to Charmaine about it, um, uh-huh. my girlfriend Charmaine, and uh, and I told her that I really want to do this uh, because. Uh, it, it's, it's a favor for Ashraf as well. From mm-hmm. I can I can reminisce on how we grew up and everything. So I think it will be fun. So which is why I told myself, okay, um, let's give it a shot. Uh, so this is my first interview in uh, in Malaysia in quite th- quite yeah. a long time. Thank you so in much. In this year, pleasure, yeah. pleasure. Thank yeah. you so I, much. I feel, I feel so honored here, also yeah. that you agreed to do this. And I know you are a private person also. So mm. and when I asked Tupun, I I sort of knew that. It was 50-50, but I thought, just give it a shot. And I'm so honoured and I feel so happy that you're here. Of course, brother. Thank you so much. All right. So, I think we're going to go on a short break. Yeah. Before we go into the business side, right? Business side, yeah. Yeah. After this, we want to talk about more on the business side and also a bit about how you met with your... A lovely girlfriend. Soon to be wife. (laughs) Charmaine. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, catch you guys after the break. Yes. Sebagai wanita yang berkejaya seperti anda, penat dan letih itu akan selalu ada. Semua kerisauan anda hilang dengan adanya Jamu Mutiara. Buka, minum, rasakan hasilnya. Jamu Mutiara yang diperbuat daripada bahan herba yang terpilih dan bahan sunah dapat memberikan apa yang anda perlukan. Mutiara bukan sekadar jamu. Sebagai wanita, ada kalanya kita terlalu sibuk dan kurang mengambil berat tentang penjagaan diri. Kecantikan seorang wanita bukanlah dari luaran saja, 
tetapi ianya bermula dari dalaman. Mengembalikan rasa kasih sayang dalam rumah tangga adalah hal yang terpenting untuk kita mengekalkan persintaan. Sudah seharusnya istri memerlukan sesuatu untuk menjaga hubungan antara suami istri agar seperti malam pertama. Berikan yang terbaik untuk suami Anda. Mutiara Wijin, rapat sampai melekat. Alright, welcome back to Apa Cerita Podcast. Ah, so, we have spoken to Darren uh, on his family background. And yep. now I think we're going to the juicy part, uh, juicy part lah bro. Which is the business side. The business side. Yeah. Alright. So, before we jump into your main business, which is Sugar Book, right? We want to touch a bit. Before, prior to Sugar Book, um, any other businesses you were working on, I, I think... There are some similarity between us, which was tune tune music, tune which shows. Adib was running, right? Yeah. So they quiet um, gig ferry. Gig ferry. Yeah. Yeah. So I I was at the background that time. I was still studying, but I I was in couple of meetings between Adib and my dad during that gig ferry times. So, so he knew the backstory a bit, lah. But yeah. he didn't know the person behind it. Yeah. yeah. So I, yeah, gig ferry times. Um, Or maybe any other business before yeah. like prior to that? Other businesses that was the one that I was selling cigarettes in. Uh, <laughs> 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 that was the first experience. Uh. <laughs> I think I think after that, uh, before Gig Ferry, we did. Um, I did a food truck as well. I think mm. uh, with a friend. Oh, um, well, that was just a a, a fun thing that we we did. Uh, but for Gig Ferry, I think um, um, I brought. Uh, I was really into Gig Ferry at that time and worked with a couple of friends. Maybe you can tell tell a bit about Gig Ferry. What is it? Oh, so um, what Gig Ferry is is it's a marketplace for you to book uh, musicians. Yep. Um, say, What's a brilliant idea, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that was a good idea. I loved it. Um, uh, I I loved music as well at that mm-hmm. time. Although I don't play any music. Yeah. But uh, I love music as well. So I thought to myself, how am I going to um, how am I going to uh, bring uh, uh, expand uh, this project? And then I I thought about uh, your brother Adip. Mm-hmm. Um, at that time, Adip was uh, running uh, Tune Studios. Yep. So I met up with Adip. I said, "Bro, you gotta see this project. Mm-hmm. Um, it's totally in line with what you're doing, and um, I think the only way to grow this is uh, if we can get the big boys on board." Yep. So then Adip um, um, brought uh, Gig Ferry. To Tune Studios, Tune Studios and BAC, right? BAC yeah. as yeah. well. Yes, correct. BAC, BAC, the university. Yeah, university, correct. Yeah, so Raja Singham. Uh, yeah, correct. And at that time, that's when I met uh, um, uh, your dad yeah. um, and, um, and and Tony Fernandez. Yes. Um, and uh, and then I I, I learned that uh, wow the uh, the big boys are very harsh. Yeah. yeah, very hard. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> My I re- dad did the deal. Yeah, uh, I knew about the. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I remember that we were we were prepping for the. Uh, um, that's what, there was a slide that like uh, a pitch. That, yeah, yeah, a pitch, and uh, and uh, your dad was just like, let's just go to the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Skip the <that>. everything <laughs> you guys <laughs> remember. Let's just go to the numbers. Uh, all got, the planning. We were, was all, like, yeah. we were all shocked. <laughs> And, and and yeah, we had we had good times uh, working on Kick Ferry, and then uh, I think about nine months later, um, uh, Tune Studios uh, uh, took over uh, mm-hmm. Gig Ferry, and after they took uh, Gig Ferry, I still wanted to do something. I I, w- I was so passionate, right, uh, uh, in tech, mm. and that's when I uh, ventured into sugar. sugar. I mean, like because there's like so many other businesses in the world, thousands of business, and then you decided to go into something so controversial. And yeah, maybe why and also maybe you can talk about it. Yeah. Uh, so, so I think um, my childhood played a big part mm-hmm. um, of how I grew up. When, so when I when I grew up, um, yeah, we we there was a time where there was a lot of uh, I was very comfortable, and then after that, uh, 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 that things happened in my childhood that I, I I left home for a while. So, and then um, I was. Uh, I was in need for a lot of money, so mm. I think that shaped it a lot. Mm. Um, and um, when I grew up, um, I saw that uh, money played a big part in everybody's lives. Like for example, um, 
I, I saw my friends uh, breaking apart. Uh, families, they broke apart. Uh, husbands and wives, they, 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 they left each other. And it's not because of love, not because of cheating. It's all because of money. Money. So um, with that, coupled with how I grew up in my childhood, I thought to myself, hey, um, there's a big gap in this sort of relationships. And uh, maybe we should, uh, maybe I should uh, look into how, how, how to create a dating platform that was focused on money. Mm. And, uh, and I had this idea back when I was studying already. Um, and there was one time when, uh, when, when, when I was back here, I was at uh, this place called uh, uh, Dome in BSC. Yep. Sitting there and uh, had coffee. Mm. And the next thing I see was that uh, a lot of, uh, there was a lot of big cars coming to Dome. And people were just having very, very, you know, very. Uh, uh, there was an, there was always an older man with a younger yeah. woman. Mm-hmm. Hot girl. And I was thinking to myself, how is this possible, right? Mm. And um, then, then I tried to think that uh, is 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 that their daughter, or, mm. or, or or what is it? So so then I tried to to think and make sense to myself that, ah, okay, I think there's a need for this sort of uh, relationships, mm-hmm. and. Uh, that's when I tried to venture into uh, the dating uh, industry because I thought to myself that there's a lot of dating apps out there right now. Um, I need something to be uh, very different. Different, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and I guess I found my niche market mm. when it when when I channeled the energy into uh, finance. Mm-hmm. So that's how we started uh, Sugar Boom. So what's your tagline again? When love meets finance, is it? Where romance meets finance. When romance, romance meets finance. finance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think, yeah, I think it's uh, something that, that is it's very something front there already. Uh. It's something there yeah, I mean, already. if you it's think just, about it, it's yeah. there. Like you think about Tinder, yeah. you think about all these other dating apps. Right. But then the one that, that really promotes itself as uh, about finance punya driven. Driven. I think finance yeah, driven the first I niche say. I would say right yeah yeah but you, you think about it right like <coughs> but I think in, in the US and stuff like that this business is not new right um even before we started sugar Book, the 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 sort of uh, relationships for sugar babies and sugar babies has always been there mm. yeah it's always been there since uh, the uh, medieval, <laughs> <laughs> you, medieval you, times. you know back then right um how people look for relationships and how people look for uh, maybe partners mm. is that they will do an ad of themselves and they pin it on the wall, say stating that I'm looking for a partner mm. and I'll pay for uh, this much. This was way back then. Mm. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah, that's that's how relationships uh, started. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, so coming back to uh, 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 Sugar Book, um, I saw I saw I saw the need uh, uh, in 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 this market, right? And I thought to myself like. Most relationships, like even now, for example, let's say if you get into a relationship mm-hmm. with a with a with, with a girl, mm-hmm. it will always be, can I pay for your, you know, your your yeah. cinema, your mm-hmm. meal, mm-hmm. you know, um, it would always be that I gotta drive a nice car. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. I gotta be. I gotta look handsome. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. And that is always that is a psycho- psychological. Yep. Yeah. Thing aspect about, to it, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's always money. Yeah, There's yeah, yeah. always money. But it's not necessarily older guys with younger women. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like it's we can be sugar sugar daddies. I, I can be a sugar <laughs> I, I, I can, be a, can sugar be, sugar. Yeah. Yeah. Can can be a sugar baby. We can be sugar baby. I can definitely be a sugar yeah. baby. Yeah. Baby? <laughs> yeah, baby, okay, baby. Yeah. Uh, men can be sugar baby too. Sugar daddy, I'm not sure. Of of myself yet, but because I think there's a lot of uh, high standard sugar oh, daddies, no, but I sugar babies I can, I can I can I can kill it. Um Maybe if they have an <laughs> maybe you suit lah. <laughs> <laughs> Sugar baby, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's always about money, right? When yeah. starting relationships. But, okay, I, I wanted to ask you, so is there a uh, real like sugar mummy also? In yeah, the, yeah, for sure. In um, the platform? In the platform, but we don't really focus on the sugar mummy side. Um, mm. we, we, but we are open to uh, sugar mummies uh, uh, joining. Oh, uh, so there's sugar baby for men lah? Sh- uh, sugar babies for I mean, for, yeah, for, ma- for sugar mummies, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, male is, sugar yeah. babies for yeah, yeah. sugar. Oh, there is. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, wow. yeah. yeah. There is. You can sign up as well, right? Yeah, you as a sugar up, baby. Man. You're single. Maybe I'll try. Yeah, you want to try? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll try. set it up. And we'll, uh, <laughs> After this, uh, personalized, <laughs> personalized. <laughs> can okay. see the talent. First. <laughs> 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 All right. So you started Sugar Book in 2016, right? So. There was a controversial time where in 2019, you had Billboard everywhere. 
even even I saw it and all like prime areas, meaning it's not cheap, you know, like Monkiara, Bangsa, Bangsa, right. Damansara. I remember the Bangsa one very well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where you had the tagline, hey sugar, upgrade your life, yeah. sugar book. I mean like that's four years in your business, meaning you were doing pretty well, right? To, for the to, first three years? Yeah, for the first three years before even Billboard. Before even it blew up in the yeah, mainstream. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we were doing quite okay back then. Um, well, but as an entrepreneur, you're never happy mm-hmm. because you're always aiming for the moon and you're always trying to hustle your way through yep. and, and get it bigger and bigger and bigger. Yep. Uh, but in terms of the billboard, right? Um, you, you know, <clears throat> uh, uh, met, met, uh, you know. Okay, so a lot of people think that uh, we worked with uh, um, advertising agencies mm-hmm. and everything. Um, but to be honest, that billboard came from just like uh, just me and a couple of uh, uh, my guys. Um, over dinner, oh. it's just like how can we get a word out about Sugar Book uh, mm-hmm. to the public? And somebody threw um, a word about uh, Darren. Why don't we have a billboard? And mm-hmm. it, and it just gave me an idea. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. Why don't we have a billboard? So the next day, uh, we went to office and we started uh, myself, my designer, and uh, myself, my designer, and one of my marketing girls. Mm-hmm. Um, we started uh, working on uh, the billboard. Yep. So the designer will start. Designing mm-hmm. and we come up with a copy and I started calling the billboards and that's it. It's just three of us mm. uh, doing the billboard. Now you got it up. Yeah, we got it up in about H- how in, in less than a month. Yeah. Um, we got uh, it up. How long was it up until you know? You twenty six days, I think. Twenty six days. Yeah. Yo. Oh, it was up for twenty six days. So um, before it was <coughs> yeah. viral. So, what 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 happened was when it was up, there was no traffic and uh, people were not talking about it. Mm-hmm. And because it, it was up in Bangsa and also up in uh, Monkera, but there was no traffic because right, today we are always stick on our phones, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Even when you're driving, you're sometimes looking at your phones. Yep. So no, so at that time, there was no traffic and it cost us a lot of money. Um, we needed to maximize the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So what happened was every day I would drive up to the billboard, and I would try to look at. It, the it, traffic. The traffic. Uh-huh. I'll, I'll try to see if it is jam already. And so you uh, tried to make it jam also. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't do that. Uh. I, I, I went there with my guys, uh, my employees, and we took a lot of photos and then we just started posting online oh. on the photos. So you made it viral? Maybe in, maybe in a way. Uh, so we, we, we're not sure. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so it was your own work. <laughs> I think. I think um, <laughs> we started posting a lot of photos, and uh, people were. Uh, um, that was the, when started comments started to come out. Yeah, uh, on the Facebook, and people started talking about it, and uh, and 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 the next thing you know, um, somebody said something on Twitter, and then one of the. Uh, was it your people? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, some uh, politician said something oh, okay. on Twitter and that's when the whole thing blew up. Hmm. And it blew up so much that... Do you remember we, the who was the politician? I'm not, I'm not sure. Someone, someone in Bangsa. And then we thought to ourselves, maybe we're going to be in trouble. It's getting too big now. Hmm. Um, then there was a lot of traffic, about 100,000 signups Whoosh. in about 26 days. Um, Do you so expect that, that? No, no, not at all. Maybe we were aiming on maybe maybe twenty, thirty k signups, mm. and we'll be happy. Mm. Um, it's like ten times. Yeah, wow. um, that's when I and knew I knew that this was blowing up when my friends in Hong Kong and in Thailand was calling me, and hey, you got a billboard? I saw your billboard and uh, I saw the news. Um, and then I knew that okay, this is this is getting really big. <laughs> this is getting to yeah. Hong Kong. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think that 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 strategy went super viral, uh, bro. I think like that made Sugar Book became like a no, recognized yeah. name in Malaysia. Yeah. Before that, I think only a few people would know lah. Yeah. You know, uh, I would know lah because you were doing it and yeah. things like that. But I think in general, like mass, they don't know. But after right right after that, it became something big. So, but you got into trouble, right? In because 2019? 2019. Did you get into trouble? Um, but if I'm not mistaken, your your site was blocked and stuff like that. 2019. 2019. No, they... Um, our site later, was, right? Yeah, our site got blocked in 2021. 2021, oh, okay. yeah. 2019, yeah. 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 no. 2019, no, because uh, we released a lot of statements saying, so that, you saying didn't that we regret, just... you didn't regret doing that, that strategy at all? I, no, I think... Um, I think um, we, we, we made calculated risks, mm. um, but... Uh, it went a little bit too viral, so but thank God at that time nothing nothing serious nothing happened. happened. Oh, yeah. you didn't get into any trouble. Not 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 not, you not, up not serious stuff. Uh, but there was uh, lawyers were calling me and 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 really angry and, and everything. Mm. So, but uh, not nothing serious. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. So I just had to put down the... Yeah, they time. took it down after 26 right. or 27 days. Yeah, yeah, so I think that in terms of brand strategy, I think that was good. Like, it made uh, everybody knew about... Shopping. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want to go to a darker times in your life. Like, now that I know that the 12, 12 years old story, I don't know if this as dark or, you know, even a bit more better. <laughs> so in February 2021... Uh, while were while you were heading for lunch, there was something shocking that happened to you, right? Maybe you can uh, talk to us a bit about about that day. Sure, I had to drink some water. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so in twenty twenty one, February twenty twenty one, we uh, we released a, 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 a set of data, and that um, angered some people, and it went so viral that. Uh, again, my lawyers were calling me, and everyone was calling me. Even my dad, my 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 parents were calling me. Um, and I knew that I was going to be in trouble already mm-hmm. at that time. So I was, th- I was I was I was telling myself that uh, okay, maybe maybe we 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 overdid it. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, there was no pulling back already, right? At that time, you just released the the data about the university, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, about uh, the university data. Um, that angered uh, a lot of people. Um, so maybe some tycoon lah, good. I'm not sure, but uh, <laughs> what happened was that my my lawyers were telling me that uh, you gotta turn yourself in. Oh, yeah. And and I I said okay. Um, do I do I really have to turn myself in, or can I just you know, um, let them come visit me? Mm-hmm. Um, my lawyer said, whichever, you're going in, no matter what. So I'm like, okay. Oh, he I'll, knew already. He knew already. And, and I, knew, I knew also. So I was just going on with my life. And um, When was this? Was this in February also? Yeah, it's in February. Mm. February itself. Chinese New Year. Mm. It was uh, Chinese New Year. So Exactly during Chinese New Year. Yeah, I went in on the first day of Chinese New Year. Oh my God. Yeah. Chinese New Year holiday. Yeah. Chinese, New holiday. <laughs> Chinese New Year. So what happened was um, that uh, I went to lunch after uh, during work I went to lunch I, I picked up the Charmaine I was picking up Charmaine oh. my car was parked at my condo and uh, immediately there were four cop cars uh, 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 stopped my car they ambushed my car so they got me down and, uh, and the cat, the cat condo compound uh, yeah, inside yeah. The condo compound uh. yeah, yeah so then they took me in and they told me that uh, you know what uh were they were they aggressive when they were taking you? At first they were aggressive, and then they they see that um, I, I'm not an aggressive person, right? So then they tone it down, um, and they were very respectful. Mm-hmm. Um, they even told me that um, you know they were following me for about four days already. They knew where I was going for Muay Thai. They mm-hmm. knew where I was going for gym. They knew where I was, I was doing groceries, mm-hmm. but they didn't want to take me in because I, they told me that uh, I was in my shorts. Mm-hmm. So they didn't want to take me in. So um, on the fourth day, uh, they brought me in. So should have voice shots on that day, man. Yeah, <laughs> 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 <Invented again. laughs> But the the cops were cool. I mean, uh, until until today, after everything, uh, we still keep in touch. Uh, with, uh, I still keep in touch with the cops, and they yeah. became my friends. Oh, nice. So maybe you can share a bit. Like you know, uh, I read that you were in for about ten days. You know, usually yeah. when I go for travel, I go for holiday. Yeah. And it will be about if I 10 go days London ah. as well, ah, it's London, like 10 days, you know. Ah, Mecca, anything yeah, for anywhere, 10 days. yeah. So <laughs> maybe you can share your experience. How was your holiday? I went in for 10 days. I came out with 11 investment offers. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. One, oh. one over per day. Uh, extra one. Bro, this is not a holiday. It's a business trip. <laughs> uh, that, that was after everything, right? But that's the, that's the good side of it. Mm. Um, the hindsight. La. Yeah. Le- but let me tell you about uh, what happened inside. Mm. Um, so, I was, um, I was placed, in, uh, I was placed in, a, in a room that, was, that, that can fit about maybe five, six people. But there was nine of us inside. There was nine, nine men inside, including myself. And uh, it was a jail cell. Um, we didn't really have proper toilets. There was no pillow, nothing. Um, I had to sleep on the floor for 10 days. Uh, you're gonna, your face is going to be on the cement floor. Oh, damn. So the toughest part was the first day because on the first day, there was no structure. There was no, there was no structure in the, in the cell. When you try to sleep, everybody's feet Everywhere. was touching your face. Mm. When you turn to your left or your right, it's people's feet, right? 
So um, on the second day, I told myself that uh, I told everyone, I told I told my uh, my cellmates that uh, guys, I'm going to be here for ten days. Um, if we want to get through these days uh, peacefully, peacefully, I think we need some structure over here. Leadership. So I started. I told them that uh, okay, this is what we're going to do. Um, all our feet face the middle. And all our heads are going to be um, at the side. Mm -hmm. So we're going to sleep in the clockwise. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we started doing that and um, our, we, ha we had better sleep. Although uh, there was lights at our, our faces throughout the night and it was super cold. But it was better. Mm -hmm. um, no blanket, nothing bro? No blanket. <laughs> no blanket, definitely. Uh, nothing. No blanket. No, no, pillow. Pillow, nothing. no pillow. Nothing. I had to drink. Um, so my our breakfast was... Um, a packet of uh, rice with water. It's just a packet of rice packet with of water. Rice with water. So I had to bite that. Uh, I had to bite the the, the 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 end of the packet to make a hole, a uh, lubangkan, and then I I'll drink that packet of water and rice. That's my breakfast. So that went on for a while, um, but uh, I we had we had. We didn't even have a proper toilet. Um, if you want to do your business, there was just a How many times did you do your business there? For me, um, I did it once and I try not to do it again. Okay. Yeah, so you I, have to I, tahan. Ah, you have to really, really, really tahan. Yeah, so... Uh, and your cellmate can see uh, when you're doing your stuff. Everybody can see everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. Yeah, so... Can no no, no holes bar, right? Uh -huh. Can see everything. Literally. And, and if and people are just... And the smell also be like... like yeah. When they shit, uh, must like walk. Yeah. So there was one time when uh, when we were, when we were at the cell, I just remembered that uh, there was a new cellmate that came into our cell, and uh, this guy stink of just shit. Holy shit! And he came into our cell. He slept with us. We were very very peaceful, right? In the in the cell, and this guy came in and he just disrupt your whole structure. Yeah, uh, the whole nobody wanted to sleep near him, oh. um, and uh, he, he be, because we found that he shat himself. Mm -hmm. He was shitting himself all the way, and he didn't want to wash himself and everything. There was house flies everywhere, lalat and everything. Yeah. So um, on the second second day, I, we had to uh, call the guards and say that you know we can't sleep right beside him. He's so dirty. He don't he don't even want to wash himself up. Mm -hmm. So the guard brought him away and uh, then our self peace uh, yeah. regained. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So so those were the times. I, I recall myself also, um, my cellmates were, uh, I still keep in touch with my cellmates. Um, we did, uh, I taught them Muay Thai in, uh, in the cell. In um, the cell. Yeah, we had to find things to do. Um, but uh, and, So you became the natural leader of, of the, the cell. Of the cell. Yeah, I, I had a lot of things to worry, so I just like uh, you know, let's all do our thing, our part, and get get away with it. So you cannot bring in any outside food or anything like that. The cops uh, were, were were nice to me, and uh, they they tried to share some nasi ayam, uh, a later stage because they knew that uh, there was nothing going on, and they knew they knew the whole story, so they were more pleasant mm. and, and nicer. Like your cellmates, what were their 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 kesalahan? Yeah. I remember there was a lot of uh, stealing and one was uh, stabbing. Um, another one was uh, domestic violence with, uh, with, uh, with wife. his wife, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, damn. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, all, all, all this stuff. But um, my cellmates, they pray five times a day and I will uh, meditate five times a day with, uh, mm -hmm. with them as well, just to clear my head. Mm. Uh, I started teaching them how to meditate as well. Mm. You um, didn't convert there. <laughs> 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 it would have been a good story, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, interesting, man. I think that yeah, yeah like that whole experience did it change you or what? What was what went in your mind at that time? I was um, I was I was very sad. Um, I was very sad, but. But uh, there, there was no time for me to be sad. Um, I had to, um, because I was constantly thinking about my loved ones. Mm. I was constantly thinking about my... Were you Charmaine already at that time? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, had, I, had to, I was thinking of Charmaine. I was thinking of my mom, my dad. Um, I was thinking about how I broke them. Uh, I put them down maybe. And I was yeah. thinking about my employees. 
uh, because I got 20, 20 plus employees and I have to uh, uh, feed their families and feed them. I didn't want to put anybody down uh, because a lot of people had a lot of faith in me. Mm -hmm. So those were the thoughts that kept going through my head throughout the whole uh, 10 days, right? And um, I, I, I had to stay strong. I knew that I had to stay strong. So I, I, I tried my best to stay strong and just try to plan ahead and try, just try to clear my head all, all this while. So, so those were, were the times that, and how I felt in... Uh, in, yeah. in, in, a lot of reflection and a lot of time for reflection yeah a lot of time for internally it's a different thing externally also thinking yeah. about your family thinking Correct. about your loved one yeah. must be very very hard uh. yeah. yeah like for you to be in there maybe you can take it but for for the family outside yeah. to think about you being in there i think that that's that the hurts, toughest part yeah, yeah. that hurts even more yeah, right? that's a that's the toughest part but did you know that you're going to be there for 10 days uh, on the first day or it's like you don't know when yeah so the funny part is that on the first day they released me Mm. Oh, um, and as I, as I was getting out, they rearrested me. Mm. What? Yeah. So is it the same case or different case? Uh, then they 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 put some other case on me. So um, I was accused of a couple of uh, allegations. Actually, uh, I was accused of uh, uh, human trafficking. Mm. I was accused of uh, um, what do you call that? Uh, uh, prostitution. Mm. I was also accused of uh, rape as well. Mm. So, uh, but uh, but all these were were, were false um, allegations, uh, completely false allegations. But it's just sad to see that uh, that uh, I was at that time I was guilty until proven, proven otherwise. innocent. When it should have been innocent until proven guilty, right? Yeah. So, but but I just had to go with it because um, I knew that uh, I knew that the police was was pressured yep. to uh, to arrest me. I, I knew I, we knew that yep. and uh, once they took me in um, you, you guys saw it like the news were talking about it and everything yep. I, I was uh, I was the, you know I, I think somebody wanted something to happen yeah, yeah. to me and there was this saying that if you want to really destroy a businessman's uh, a reputation all you gotta do is you see him in handcuffs mm -hmm. and if you see him in handcuffs even if he is not guilty his whole business is gone mm -hmm. He as a businessman. That was what happened to you. And that was exactly what happened to me. And I saw you with a handcuff, and like yep. they had to bring you and stuff like that. Again. Yeah, yeah. That, that's exactly what happened to me. So right mm -hmm. now, if I try to start a business or if I go to um, um, any any sort of banks to to open a, a bank account, they will look at um, the Google results and mm. they will see me in handcuffs and then they'll give me a a, a hard time. Mm -hmm. Ask them to watch the podcast then. You <laughs> 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 know who I am, you know, I'm not a bad guy. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, you survived you survived the ten days. Much high respect, you know. Um not easy. I think none of us I mean I wouldn't want to go yeah. through that. Yeah, that's Listening the last the story, thing I want to go to again. Yeah. But in the end you still persevere, right? So this is something that is, you know, uh highly respected of. And zoom into 2023, Sugar Book is still alive. And it has even grown to, if I read correctly, into 90 countries, you know, and having more than 4 million members. So meaning you didn't give up after being released. So where, where is Sugar Book now? And, and how do you find the strength? Yeah, to, to correct. Carry on? Yeah, the perseverance. I think because of the people that I'm with, um, one... Um, not one of my employees left mm. um, during during my tenure in in jail, because every single one knew that uh, we weren't doing anything illegal, mm. um, and every every one of uh, my employees knew that uh, we are going to pull through this. Um, so so that that was one that when I came out uh, uh, before I came out, I actually uh, uh, had the chance to say you know to wave at them and everything. When I saw that my employees were there, it gave me a lot of strength. Mm -hmm. Um, because uh, they still had faith in me and they still had faith in the whole business. Um, that was one of the main factors. Um, and then um, I thought to myself that, you know, I'm never going to let uh, my employees down. I'm uh, never how gonna many let employees you had at that time? 21, right? 20? 20, 20. 20, 20 plus, mm -hmm. about 20. And I, thought, I told myself, I'm, ne I'm not going to let them down. Yeah. Um, we've came so far. Um, I need to pull through this. So, and I told myself that, you know, I had so much time in jail, right? So I was telling myself, as long as we're not doing anything illegal, mm. there was nothing for us to be afraid of. It was grey, bro. Yeah. It gray. was a grey area. Not something... Um, would you say it's 
a lot of people say that it is a, a great area, but when we zoom in, um, when it's, we zoom in, right? It's legal. It's, right? There's no policy, yeah. It's just I a dating platform. You it's only just got charged. Network. You only got charged by disturbance of peace or something like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's oh, pretty, that's it. That's, yeah. it. that's, it. that's it. You only charge. Yeah, I pleaded. I pleaded guilty to um, that charge, which is a uh, disturbance of the peace, because we released the data, mm, mm. and uh, and that was it. Because um, there was there was. N- the, the cops came in to Sugarbrook and took our laptops and everything. We assisted in the investigations and they found that, you know, you, you guys are not doing anything illegal. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was, uh, which is why things were better at that time. Yep. So after yep. the jail, right, how was your business? Did it, did it Was grow, it impacted yeah, or, or what not? Did it grow or did it become like, you know? It, it, it grew it significant, uh, it, it grew in a significant level mm. and Immediately when I came out, um, I was on a call with uh, with my partner already, uh, who became my investor. Yeah, you mentioned 11, 11 yeah. investor. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I I I got out. You don't even get to brush your teeth, you know, <laughs> in, in at jail. Oh, um, I thought you went out, didn't get to brush your teeth, then got offered. No, <laughs> didn't get to brush your teeth you in the jail you don't even for the have, whole ten days. Yeah, you don't even so get to shower. Stink, uh, bro. You stink. But I was in. Once I got out, I was in the car. And I started making calls and looking at all my emails already. Mm-hmm. And immediately I told uh, my partner, I, I said that, uh, hey, I'm out. Um, I think we need to talk. Uh, so went home, took a good shower. The next thing you know, I'm on Zoom call. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Straight away. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't, uh, didn't take a break or anything. Huh? I, I took 10 days break. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the break, bro. That was the holiday. <laughs> <laughs> but something good came out of it like, in the end. Uh, in a way. Yeah, in a way, yeah. In a way. Um, just that... Um, and the, the global expansion, right? When was that? Was that prior to that or after that? We had members coming from a couple of countries uh, prior to uh, the news already. But it just made, it just made people notice Sugar Book even more at that mm-hmm. time. Um, but it also taught us on how to, you know, not to be so loud. Mm. Um uh, maybe there are things that we can share and things that we cannot share mm-hmm. uh, that will anger some people. So those were the lessons that we learned. Um, but yeah, so now we're looking forward into, uh, uh, into our expansion into Taiwan. So a little bit of uh, questions that I would say a little bit hard. Like, you know, I've, I've read a little bit of uh, some interviews you've done and you've always defended uh, the sugar babies and using the word of freedom of choice, right? So everybody has their own decision and whatnot. And also, I think I read, you know, during, after you left uh, jail as well, is that you, you were in contact with some sugar babies as well to see if anything is needed to, to be helped, right? For, for their, if there's any down, down time or anything. And aren't you worried about what, uh, sugar book portrays and what it will create towards the society in terms of future generation, and as well there were recent news about an OnlyFans um, OnlyFans person that killed herself, and as well as a Malaysian influencer that actually stole some stuff. H- how do you manage this this kind of stuff? I think at Sugar Book, right. Um, we are trying to create a future generation of mm-hmm. uh, people that uh, people that understand their worth and know their worth. Mm-hmm. Um, when I say freedom of choice, is because that uh, we don't want to be we don't want to be uh, stuck in a society where where people are afraid to make their own choices. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, say, for example, in, in 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 India, right? There's still uh, what do you call that? Uh, arranged arranged marriage. mm. arrange marriages, right? I'm pretty sure that is in Malaysia as well. Yep, yep. Um, but um, sometimes, um, if you are, let's say, if you uh, you want to get into a relationship and you say you want you you love this person, sometimes and most times you are judged by you judged by your loved ones, you judged by your, your family, your family. Yeah. Um, that happens maybe in our country as well. Yep. So um, I understood that, and uh, we see that uh, um, uh, uh, there's uh, there's something that we can do about this over here. So. Um, to going back on the, the generation, we, we, we're trying to create a future generation that, uh, that goes back and appreciates and embraces their, um, their, their, 
the traditional values. Mm-hmm. Um, like for example, I, I was brought up as a, a very traditional man, mm-hmm. whereby I would always be uh, supporting and always um, providing for the family. Yep. So we want that to to happen at Sugarbook mm-hmm. and for our members as well. But the thing is that times are changing right now. It's not just the man that is providing. It can be the woman, woman as well, yes. That is providing but as well. Aren't you afraid that like in the future generation it will create more of women that, that don't value their own worth by you know, one of it is by posting on OnlyFans and things like that. And number two is like uh, being a sugar baby, which is a very thin line between mm. You know, prostitution, for example. Don't you think? Don't aren't you worried that the future generation you will have so much more people that is open to become prostitution, whereas before it was something that is super taboo. Like, taboo, you know. Mm, if yeah. you do it, also you do it in secret. Yeah. But now people are open about it. It's creating a whole different culture. Yeah. Yep. So I think first we gotta understand what is a sugar baby and what is a prostitute, right? Mm-hmm. And a prostitute is always. Um, um, in you know, um, in sex uh, trafficking, yep. and always forced into doing the things that they don't want to do. Yep. Oh, but um, a sugar baby is absolutely different. That's why it says choice. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so like for example, if you are a sugar baby, it's not a profession. Yep. It's not. It's not a job. It's uh. It's your choice. And you can choose if you want the guy or not. Yeah. Right. And it's prostitution. You can't choose. Right. Yeah. You just yeah, have yeah, to yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Go with and it. like like Whatever what I mentioned, I can say. I can be a <laughs> I can be a sugar baby. So if I'm a sugar baby, am I a prostitute? So it's not. Uh, it's. I think it's. Really so you wouldn't say a sugar baby is a prostitute. Oh, definitely not. Um, they're two very, very different uh, individuals. Mm-hmm. Uh, prostitute mm-hmm. is forced into selling her yeah, body. I agree. And most most prostitute do it, not because they want to do it. They were forced to do it. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. They're they're all forced to do it. Like, um, if you're if you're a sugar baby, sh- and these sugar babies they come from all walks of life. Yep. Right. A- and it can be um, a single mother. We have a lot of single mothers. Yeah, a lot true. of mm-hmm. single mothers. And we can't label these single mothers as prostitutes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and because these members that come into sugar, they are real people yep. searching for love. Mm-hmm. That, that, that is the number one factor. They are the real people searching for love. And love does happen mm-hmm. at, uh, at Sugar. Yeah. yeah. But <clears throat> for example, right, I was talking to my friend the other day and... Of course, I don't. I don't go out anymore. Right? I don't party anymore. So I don't know how's the scene like. But one of my friends came out to me and said, "Bro, now if you go to some of the hot, hottest club in KL, like the ones, the, you know, the the big clubs lah, you will see a lot of uh, like hot girls dancing on the table and stuff like that. And then there will be like their sugar daddy on the table. You know, it's changing the way. Like these men are complaining to me because they have no chance now. <laughs> <laughs> all these girls are all like, you know, well, taken all, of, yeah. well taken care of, and they don't have any any money to to support these girls. Like how this sugar daddy, because they have, they are like 10, 20 years ahead, right, in terms of financial stability. Mm-hmm. So, what what would you respond to that? To these boys, like especially. Be a sugar daddy. Oh, you guys gotta work hard. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it still comes up positive, right? Yeah, you guys, you guys gotta work hard. Uh, we all need money to survive. Yeah. Um, it's um, you know, people ask me like, uh, can can money buy love? Mm. Right. And I would always tell them that the experiences leading up to love, like for example, if we are going out, we need a nice car, we need a nice clothes, and mm-hmm. that red dress that you're you're wearing. Mm-hmm. All these require money. Mm-hmm. So let's say if you believe that money cannot buy love, but theoretically speaking, money makes it easier for us to fall in love. Mm-hmm. So no matter what, we need money. Yep. And we got to tell those guys that you guys got to work hard. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Don't just party. Uh. Yeah, not just party. <laughs> <laughs> 20 years down the road, you can be that sugar daddy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, l- love is a verb, right? Yeah. It's actions. Mm. So money allows you to create more so actions, actions yeah, yeah. To, to do actions you know, if, you say, saying, if yeah. you say that uh, but then relationships the, the argument is bro like they say like the pure form of love is like almost like dimish, uh, diminishing you know like mm. it's almost gone already because these girls they look at money first uh, it changes the way they, they think you know? okay so let, let me ask you guys a question right mm. when we get, do would you say that in a relationship money don't matter no, it matters. matters. Yeah, it matters. Yeah. Right? So, it's just that nobody talks about it. Yeah. You see, every time when we get into a relationship, 
without sugar book, we are always falling in love first. Mm. But when you fall in love, and we found that, when you fall in love, it takes you about maybe six months, one year, two years, then you talk about money. Mm. I don't think that's right. We reversed everything. You we reverse yeah. engineer the shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> reverse engine. This is Dr. Dan yeah. in the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like, for example, my relationship with, uh, with Charmaine, mm. I, I would be very honest with her and say that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be the provider of the family, mm. but all I need from you is that uh, you're going to take care of the kids, uh, you're... you're, you're uh, if you want to work, that's fine. But I need to come home and I need to be comfortable. Yep. Uh, can do we have that agreement? A um, support system. Yeah. yeah. Right? So so that's how that's how relationships work at the uh, sugar. Yeah. Okay. So I also want to ask you a bit like, about your personal life. Like I think you and Shamin has been has been together for many years. I think even my wedding, you guys came together, right? Yeah. 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 Oh. I remember. I remember at my wedding. People were asking me, who's that girl, you know? And she was someone like nobody have seen in KL. And then you were the first that, that, that brought her to, to <laughs> our, our <laughs> Nila. Can? And everybody was asking, who's, who's Shamil? Even the uncle-uncle, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so she really made a statement. La. And then, of course, you came with her and stuff like that. So how did you guys, how did you guys met? And, and maybe you can tell us a bit about your love story between you and Shamil. Yeah, um... Or did you guys meet on Sugar Book? <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I met Charmaine at, uh, at a party and uh, we started uh, hitting off there and I always wanted to see her again because she's always... Uh, I could talk to her for hours. Until today, um, I could still talk to her for hours. And uh, on our first date, we didn't even go on to somewhere uh, fancy. fancy. Mm -hmm. We went into some coffee shop. Mm -hmm. where there was rats and there was uh, cockroaches. <laughs> um, and we, we stayed there and we, we spoke for about two to three hours. Mm. Um, that was our relationship. And then, mm. then I knew that, oh, wow, this girl is different. And mm. I, I, I can really talk to her intellectually and she's very intellectual as well. And she's not from Kedah, right? she's from Kedah or something. Right? Yeah, she's from Kedah. I'm from Penang. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh yeah. nearby. Yeah. Right? yeah, so we were neighbours. And to, to Charmaine, her, her, her big town was Penang. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, so you were so the boy you, from uh, town, yeah, 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 yeah. boy from the town. Yeah, right. yeah. So I was from Pinang. The cool guy, the cool guy across the town. <laughs> so we we you met at a party. Probably ten years yeah. together, right? Yeah, if about about eight nine years already. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I got married eight years ago. So yeah, yeah, eight years ago. Yeah, eh? at that that time, I think you just started going out. Yes, you, right? yes, 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 yes. I remember. I remember that she was in a blue dress as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I started Sugar Book about seven, eight years, eight years ago. Um, after I got after I got with uh, Charmaine, oh. and she was the one that was always there uh, with me, supporting you supporting throughout me. the whole. Yeah. Like if you ask me, um, what was the one uh, photo that I can remember from our old offices? You know, the super super small offices. I would remember Charmaine being my model mm -hmm. because I had to take a photo of our desk, our office, and post it on Job Street. Mm -hmm. uh, that was that was us back then. Mm. Wow! So you guys go way beyond before before right? Sugar yeah, Book. Yeah, definitely. Before you even became who you are today. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And you know, this might not be true. But then, because you are the founder of Sugar Book, people will always assume that Shamin is your sugar baby. <laughs> and I, I don't know, don't you think this degrades her in a way? And what, what, what do you say about this? I think it's actually the opposite. Um, you are the sugar baby. <laughs> 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 I mean, okay, so let's see. Um, let's say, right? Let's say if you own Sugar Book. How do you think your wife would feel? Mm. I don't know, man. I think she would flip. She would flip, yeah. bro. For sure she would flip. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. Now, for Sugar Book, right? Because of Sugar Book, it actually bonded us even more. Mm. Because after having Sugar Book, I understood that there needs to be a lot of trust. And there needs to be a lot of courage on her part. Mm -hmm. Because to date, the founder of Sugar Book, where, you know, there's a lot of uh, sugar babies or sugar <laughs> babies and all that stuff going yeah. on, 
the woman has to be a very strong woman. Your mm-hmm. trust has to be very formidable that you cannot break it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And that actually made us so strong. And today, every day, like today I woke up and I look at Charmaine and I, I love her. Mm. Every time I see her, I say love. still the most mm. beautiful woman She's you've seen. Still her. the most beautiful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, That's how I feel when I see my wife, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's true. After many years or so, you still feel the same. Like exactly. So, you, you, so, a lot of people think that if I'm the founder of Sugar Book, there's going to be a lot of cheating happening and, mm. uh, and, and, and that relationship won't last. But I could say that uh, it's all to do with the men. Mm. It's all to do with, with us. Mm. What are we doing? Mm. What are we thinking? Yep. If you want to do it, make it a secret. This guy. So 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 um so yeah so because because we have the trust with each other right um until today like for example you see that uh, I'm doing this interview with you and every single interview that I go to Shamin will be there Mm -hmm. and it's not that uh, she wants to be there because I want her to be there because she is my pillar of strength Mm -hmm. and I'm so used to having her her Mm -hmm. there and uh, it just makes everything better Mm -hmm. so if we're just honest with ourselves it's uh, your relationship will be and I think she also after dating you I think she also grew as a person as well you know her career she became so much more well known also now yeah, you know? yeah so i think a lot of positive came out from from the relationship right yeah f- um, from shamin's words herself uh, she mentioned that uh, she learned so much um, by by being in our meetings and and watching how mm. i started sugar book mm-hmm. and, uh, and and she tried she applied it into her daily life as well like negotiation mm. um, letting people into her life yes no and everything and mm-hmm. hiring also um, so yeah, it's I think it's a win-win situation, and that's what the relationship should be—a um, two-way thing, not just a one-way thing. Yeah. yeah, but you know, to be fair, I think you guys are a perfect couple, lah. Thank I you. <laughs> see you guys together, and you guys just look perfect together because you are such a good-looking guy, and she's such a pretty girl. <laughs> so I'm sure babies will turn out well. Also, so I hope you guys also will. I think will, yeah. will move on to the next phase in life, and don't forget to invite me. Oh, for yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> in the end of the day, you know, screw what other people say, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. As screw long as you guys are, yeah. you guys are good together. Yeah, it's yeah. If, fine. if they, if, I always say, I always tell Charmaine, like, if they want to say, if they, people want to say something about you, people want something to say, we might as just let them <laughs> talk about it. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's good, yeah. good publicity they're talking <laughs> about you, right? And you have to maintain your fitness and look young so that it doesn't <laughs> 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 appear to be. <laughs> uh, if not, then he'll be the sugar daddy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and look, besides Shami Sabo, right? Besides Shami Lagi, I don't Confirm 100% sugar daddy. <laughs> <laughs> but now, now you pass as a, as a boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, as a sugar baby. Sugar baby as well. <laughs> <Sugar baby. laughs> Alright, so All right. I think we've spoken a lot about your business. We've spoken some about your personal life. Maybe we want some some. Uh, we want to know about what's next for Darren. What's mm. next for for Sugar Book? Any new venture or anything you plan to do in future, or any market that you want to access? So for Sugar Book right now, um, it's not only a dating platform for sugar daddies and sugar babies. It's also um, a live streaming platform right now. Mm. Um, I saw you have like events and stuff. Right? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, we're, we're, we're trying to take the live stream market. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the live stream, what, what does the girl do? Um, so they'll, they'll, the they'll theme, dance. Right? They will, they will, they will, um, they're, they're, they're teams, uh, T-H-E-M-E, teams. They'll dance, they'll perform. And uh, uh, sometimes they'll do uh, competitions. Uh, for example, uh, we'll, we'll get the, the, the streamers to blow balloons until it pops mm. and who can, who can who, you know, the, the ones that can uh, pop it the, the, the fastest will win something. Mm. And uh, we, 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 we try to uh, um, award the girls with... Uh, All cool stuff, man. The cool stuff. Yeah. I mean... Oh yeah, oh, I, yeah. I, I've I never mean, watched it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never <laughs> watched it, but, <laughs> but I read, I read about it. <laughs> so Chanel, still, yeah. that, that, that's what they they like, yeah. and we send them on trips as well. Oh. I think um, the previous one we sent uh, a sugar a sugar baby and a, also a streamer. We sent her to uh, Japan, mm-hmm. and we paid for her flight, Everything. and she went to Japan. She went to Ultra Music Festival in wow. Japan, mm. and uh, yeah, so there will be more of this stuff coming in, um, and. And for for now, we are trying to bring uh, Sugar Book into Taiwan. Taiwan. Yeah. Um, I just got back from Taiwan about last week, and uh, so far the market has been very receptive. Mm-hmm. 
and um, people people are, uh, people people know what Sugarbook is right now over there, but there's still a lot of things for us to work on. And uh, we're, we're going to be working on the live streaming as well uh, into uh, into Taiwan. Yeah. So, uh, bro, like Sugarbook has always been associated with negative things, you know, like uh, prostitution lah. Uh, people say, uh, you know, a lot of bad things, a lot of negative uh, connotation to it, right? But is there any success story, or is there anyone that actually got married uh, using the platform and things like that? Okay. Um, in 2021, January, before um, I went in, I received a call. Um, and, and in that call, um, this, uh, my, one of my members, which is a sugar daddy, invited me to go to his wedding. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, he was one of the royal, t- royal families. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but I had to miss it. And uh, he got married. And today, he, they have five kids. Um, if I would have went there, it would be a, a royal wedding that I, mm-hmm. I, I could uh, uh, that I attended. So that was one story that uh, we hold close to us uh, um, all the time. Find dearly, yeah. Yes, and and the second story that I can share with you was that uh, there's a sugar baby on our platform, 36, 37 years old. Um, she her husband passed away, mm. and um, she has two kids. Um, mm-hmm. She went on uh, all the other conventional dating apps, but mm-hmm. uh, she couldn't find love again because she was also good looking and she a lot of guys just wanted to get into her pants mm. um, but she wanted something real so so um, sugar baby is not just into someone's pants uh, it's like no. real relationship uh. yeah. it's uh, not tinder uh. yeah um, because the people that you meet you meet at sugar book they are more of uh, age they want something serious yeah. of course there are casual relationships definitely but uh, a lot of people we did a survey uh, to your question we did a survey with uh, sugar daddies and surprisingly the number one reason why men are in sugar book is because they are looking for real relationships, emotional mm-hmm. relationships. Mm-hmm. Why? Because one could only imagine because... Where um, can they find love, right? Yeah. So if you're, you're yeah. 40, 50 years old, you're working all the time yeah. and then when you get home, um, how are you going to meet someone? You don't have high school, no college, nothing, right? Yeah. Yeah. All married already with yeah, kids, bro. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, going back to the story... Um, the um, the sugar baby um, went on Tinder and everything, and um, couldn't find love. Couldn't, couldn't find love. Um, her sister introduced her to Sugar Book. Say that, you know what? You should try this app called Sugar Book. She went on Sugar Book. Um, she met uh, before she met this sugar daddy. Um, she told this sugar daddy, you know what? I've been on a lot of dating apps. Um, I'm gonna be very honest. Uh, I have two kids. Are you okay? Mm. Today. Um, the sugar daddy is not only supporting her, but also supporting her two kids two into kids. private international school. Mm-hmm. Safe fall in Ampang. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So those were the stories that uh, we have. And these stories, we can't really share with people because people love to talk about... Uh, the bad things. The bad side, yeah. Yeah, always. Because bad news travels so fast, right? Mm-hmm. If you have a good news, and if today you have a good news, none of, none of your friends will know about it. Yeah, yeah. But if you have a bad news, even your grandmother, your grandfather, yeah. everyone will be calling you yeah. to talk about the bad news. Yeah. So it travels like wildfire. Yeah, true. But I think also, uh, you guys from Sugar Book, you did all you can to make it at your own terms. Everything to make it as, as healthy as possible. Yeah, we we'll try to educate them. Correct. Um, Correct. Try, I think that was one of our most... Uh, um, it's, a, it's, a t- it's a tool for us to really educate our members on what uh, what being a sugar baby is, what being a sugar daddy is. Mm-hmm. And constantly, it's just our responsibilities yep. in educating. Yeah. Yep. Amazing. So I think we've heard a lot uh, from Darren. Yep. And thank you so much. And you know what? Before before I I got Darren in, I told a few of my friends that I'm going to bring in Darren. And a lot of people asked me, isn't it going to be controversial and things like that? For me, right, why I asked Darren to come is because I know that one day he's going to be a a big global player and mm. at that time you can't interview him anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so this is probably the only chance that I'll get. <laughs> Any time for you, Ashraf. Yeah, Any time for you. a future billionaire and I, I, I have a very high regard for you. I respect you so much for doing whatever you're doing and yes. I think, you know, from who I know you, I mean from what I know from you before and then from who you are today, I think it's something that is amazing, uh, your transformation, mm what you have achieved in life and, and you know, even your relationship, your business, everything I see about you, I, I, I have a very high respect and high regard for you. Like. So, thank you so much for, for being here, sharing your story with for us. Sure. And yeah. I think it's been amazing. You know, for any sure. word from you? Yeah, for me, it's a big honour 
because I've heard story from Ashraf and actually in my own life, like I was I was involved in the tune uh, gig ferry thing, but as a side uh, observer, I didn't know you were you were you were involved. I knew there was uh, the CEO Brian Koo, right? Brian Fu, yeah. Brian Fu, uh, Brian, Brian Fu, yeah. Brian Fu, and also seeing we all know the the founder of Sugar Book got caught yeah. all this yeah and we know about the McLaren yeah we yeah, know about the, the beautiful girl he's dating correct we only <laughs> thought that his life is always all yeah. just good and wonderful but correct. actually you know in life no such thing right there's always ups and downs yeah, and the know, ones yeah. that persevere most will will in the end they win right yes so perseverance is the the key takeaway that I would say yeah, to, and, to our listeners and also and I think another key takeaway that we can take from uh, Darren also how humble he is mm. being who he is and yep. the way he carry himself the way he treat people I think that is something that everyone can can look up for like yeah. uh, any last word from you Darren any advice to the viewers and listeners I think what I can say is that uh I think what I can say is that um, no matter what we're doing, um, um, first, first and foremost is that uh, we definitely need to love what we're doing. Mm. Um, if, if, that's, if you're just acting that, 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 that you like it, it will never happen because if you when things go bad, mm. you're definitely going to give up. Yeah. Mm. If um, if you love it and you have that passion for it, if things go bad, mm. no matter what, passion will always Pre-sever. take over, okay. and uh, you will always uh, try other ways on on, on doing it. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of people tell me that uh, um, they want to be uh, CEOs, they want to be uh, bosses, and and uh, it's looking back at how, like sitting here looking back at how um, um, how we started uh, Sugar Book. Um, if you ask me, am I going to do it again? I think uh, I would say yes. I, I'm not going to do it again. No? no? For yeah. sure. You wouldn't sure. do Sugar Book? A lot okay. of people you ask. Bec- for sure. For yeah. what you went through, you wouldn't? Yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't start a company because I would want to spend a lot of time with my family. Mm. Um, starting a company, I've seen my, my mom grow old. I can't even see my mom grow old. But every time I see her, she's older and older. Mm. And uh, starting a company, I can't even see my dad. And she's getting older and older as well. Yeah. Um, you know, if I want to spend a lot of time with my loved ones, my family, or if I want to start a family, don't start a company. Go, mm-hmm. go, go work in a remote company and hope that they, they allow they you to work you. there for a long time. Mm-hmm. Don't start a company if you want all that. Um, so yeah, so I don't think I would, I would do all that stuff again. Um, and uh, n- I think nobody in their, their sane mind would want to go through that again. Mm-hmm. Um, people only see the good side, like what you mentioned, right? But there's a lot of ups and uh, there's yeah. a, so many downs. Um, and uh, yeah, just like what you just have to really like what you're doing. Yeah, but you know, <clears throat> I had a friend who told me, like last time he was a bit poor, and when he was down, he was down in the Kalisa. Now he's down, he's down in Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a better now. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I think thank you so much, Darren, thank for you, being here. And inshallah, we'll see thank everyone so in the Thanks. next Thanks. episode. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure, well. pleasure, my. All right. Uh, for everybody out there, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Yes, share with everybody. Your yeah. WhatsApp group, mother, father, ustad, semua. Everybody. everybody. <laughs> Probably not this episode, but other episodes also. <laughs> this episode also, you know, I think it's very educational. It's Correct. something that, you know, people can learn so much. Yep. So, do share. Share with everyone. All right. Take care. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.